Well, the year-long wait has finally arrived. SpaceX's first private spacewalk is upon us. It's shaping up to be a historic event like no other. What's going to happen, and how will Elon actually react? We'll find out more on this, and more in today's NR Studio episode. Polaris Dawn is the first of a planned 300 mission series as part of Jared Isaacman's Polaris program. The mission actually marks the third flight for SpaceX's Dragon Resilience crew, which has previously flown crews in impressive formation. Though this is the first commercial space flight, also funded and managed by the billionaire. After being delayed by nearly two weeks due to bad weather, the Polaris Daunt mission launched early on September 10th. As expected, SpaceX's crew operations went smoothly, and the crew, including Scott Isaacman, Scott Kid Petit, Anna Manon, and Sarah Gillis, settled into the Dragon spacecraft before experiencing any weather related delays. After launch, the Falcon 9 and Dragon performed flawlessly, and the crew is now able to work in orbit. Unlock SpaceX achievements announced at X-Act Awards. On the first day, the Polaris Daunt crew led by Jared Isaacman ate their first meal in space. They slept and then began breathing treatments before their spacewalk. The first day was fairly uneventful, but the work would get tougher in the days to come. Using Dragon's forward thrusters, SpaceX lifted the spacecraft to a record altitude for any crewed spaceflight outside the moon, 1,400 kilometers, 870 miles. The last time humans were this high around Earth was during the 17 days of Apollo. Not including the Apollo program, Gemini 11 set the previous altitude record at 1,368 kilometers, 800 miles, using the target vehicle's propulsion system to reach that height. It's amazing that Elon posted an inspiring message on his X page, striving for greater heights for a brighter future than the past, waking up every morning inspired to learn new secrets of the universe. In addition, the Polaris mission also marks the furthest journey ever made by humanity, the furthest journey ever made by a woman in space. The Polaris astronaut mission is heading to an altitude three times higher than the space station which is the furthest humans have been from Earth in more than half a century, Elon tweeted on X. SpaceX informed the crew of its new altitude, and Isaac Mann replied, We all look forward to our friends in the Artemis program, taking us to even greater heights. This is what sets the Polaris program apart from other commercial space missions. Polaris is pushing SpaceX to meet or exceed NASA's spaceflight goals. While some may see Polaris as a tech billionaire spending big, Polaris is a private space program with its own goals and missions for space exploration. Along with the record-breaking altitude, the spacecraft then descends about 700 kilometers to prepare for the main mission, which is even more impressive than before, the spacewalk itself. On September 12th, the crew officially accomplished the feat. Isaac Mann was first, followed by Gillis, the only two crew members to exit the spacecraft, and they did so for a total of 20 minutes. Even if they had returned from Dragon, the astronauts who remained on board would still have been exposed to the vacuum of space because Dragon has no airbags, meaning the entire cabin was pressurized during this phase. The astronauts left the Dragon using a Skywalker-like scaffolding system that was stretched just above the hatch to provide stability. While our two astronauts didn't experience free space navigation in the true sense, delivering them directly to space was considered a spacewalk and enough to test the suits they wore. The SpaceX-designed pressurized suits were not equipped with independent oxygen or other life support systems. Instead, they relied on a 12-foot umbilical cord to provide air, power, and communications. As Isaac Mann and Gillis stood just outside the stretch, they tested the comfort and mobility of the pressurized suits, known as extravehicular activity or EVA suits, by moving their arms, hands, and legs in a variety of different positions to determine the effort required to perform basic tasks. Musk was quick to congratulate Team Dragon and the Polaris astronaut crew, sharing an incredible SpaceX video showing Isaac Mann achieving the milestone. Bill Nelson also congratulated SpaceX. Congratulations to the Polaris program and SpaceX on the first commercial spaceflight in history. Today's accomplishment represents a major step forward for the commercial space industry and NASA's long-term goal of building a vibrant U.S. space economy. Cameras mounted inside and outside the Crew Dragon, as well as other cameras mounted on the astronaut suits, provide spectacular views of space in the Earth below, 
As the spacecraft travels in an elliptical orbit with a low point at 195 kilometers and a high point at 735 kilometers or 320 kilometers, 200 miles farther than the ISS. Previously, the Crew Dragon spacecraft put its crew through a lengthy pre-breathing process to prepare their bodies for space travel. The process works by gradually removing nitrogen from the crew member's blood to prevent gas bubbles from forming in their blood as pressure changes inside the spacecraft. The pre-breathing process is designed to prevent decompression sickness, a very dangerous and potentially fatal condition that divers can experience if they try to surface too quickly. The pre-breathing protocol that Polaris divers undergo is very different from that used on the ISS. The space station has special air pockets where astronauts can do a quick pre-breathing process before embarking on a spacewalk. It only takes a few hours, but Gillis said Don Cruz's Polaris pre-breathing procedure took about 45 hours, as the oxygen levels in the cabin were gradually increased as the pressure was slowly depressurized. The biggest challenge came after the spacewalk, sealing the Crew Dragon capsule, then repressurizing the cabin and returning safely to Earth. The only significant initiative was Jared Isaacsman, who accelerated the development of a spacesuit for future SpaceX missions. This is a 1.0 version of a suit that could one day be worn by hundreds, if not thousands, of astronauts as they travel to the Moon or Mars. Building a lunar base in a city on Mars will require thousands of spacesuits. The development of this spacesuit and the EVA performed during this mission are important steps toward designing a spacesuit that is scalable for future long duration missions. SpaceX wrote on Twitter. The suit is an improvement over the standard SpaceX launch and entry suit, with modifications including the addition of a new thermal layer to help control temperature, displays that display pressure, temperature and humidity data, and the use of new materials and semi-rigid materials to improve mobility. The first flight of the new suit will determine whether it is truly suitable for future missions. Smart SpaceX engineers will build an EVA suit in less than a year, Isaacsman added. NASA has been working on this for some time, and it typically costs billions of dollars. I can assure you that SpaceX's owners are not investing that much. Cost savings are important. NASA's requested budget for the Artemis Moon Program is just $7.8 billion for fiscal year 2025. That compares with inflation-adjusted costs of just under $29 billion for the Apollo program in 1966. Save money on clothes can be a big deal if pockets aren't as deep as they were three generations ago. But Player of Stones also has a scientific mission. It carries 36 different experiments from 31 institutions, including a number that will collect data for NASA's human research programs. In addition, Polaris Don astronauts will participate in a number of studies conducted by the Translational Research Institute for Health, a consortium of academic institutions funded by NASA. Polaris Don crew members participating in Trisha's study will provide data on how spaceflight affects mental and physical health through a series of rigorous medical tests and analyses conducted before, after, and during the mission. NASA's statement said, this work will include assessments of behavior, sleep, bone density, eye health, cognitive function, and other factors, as well as blood, urine, and breath tests. That's it for today's episode. Congratulations to our Polaris Don team, and thanks again for watching our video. Until next time.